So I'm going to speak a little bit about relapses, triggers, grocery shopping, obsessive with reading food labels, irritability, snapping at people, and if all of these are like familiar to you, as it's normal, it's a part of recovery, it's part of restriction, it's part of a restrictive mindset, that's just where we're at right now. So let's get into all that fun stuff. <laughs> realize that this was a behavior of someone that was in a sort of starvation or a deficit whether it's a nutritional deficit it doesn't matter whatever it is when you are in a deficit or a state of starvation in eating disorder recovery you probably notice that you obsess about food all the time not just about food but cooking you probably say that to everyone I love cooking I'm a total foodie you always probably want to look and read through all different restaurant menus whether you're gonna eat there or not you just want to know what's on the menu you want to watch loads of cooking shows you want to cook to feed people feeding people is a big big thing in recovery and then grocery shopping like I pass by the grocery store and I go in there every single day and I want to read every single packet pointing out people oh that looks fun that looks fun oh my god look at this new product and it's something where you're just so consumed every single second or you'll just go into a cafe just to see what bakery goods they have on sale or what new fun sandwich ideas they have and then you want to beat yourself up and you feel so demotivated walking out of the grocery store out of the cafe because you end up thinking well i wish i could just order that and try that or you think oh my god there's just too much on that menu i'll never get around to trying everything at once because i can only do one fear food a day that mindset is only there because you are in that starve place starve mentality now i am now working for the last two weeks i've started working with this therapist with a whole new team i'm doing an intensive outpatient program I went into a bit of a dip when I got my lower braces fitted. Yes, I'm an adult with lower braces that I'm very insecure and self-conscious about, and that's okay. I'm not trying to trigger anyone. I'm not trying to do anything like that. If you're an adult with braces too, great, fair dues, but when you couldn't eat for two, three days after, it's easy to slip back into old habits. But I found the specialist here in Dubai, which I couldn't believe that there actually was a specialist team. And that's where I've been at so far. So we're working on a lot of this stuff, like realizing when it comes to sitting and eating a meal, you're not just eating for physical health, physical strength. You're eating to be able to just walk to a grocery store and leave that obsessiveness about food, to have a conversation with people and not always need to snap at the ones around you or not feeling so exhausted at the end of the day and just so deflated and disheartened and low and fatigued that you don't have time for people. Or you've probably noticed that when you're eating food, that you don't want people to speak to you. You just think, do not talk to me, let me just elongate um, the experience. So if you guys notice a lot of these in your life and how much it actually does control of every single part of your life, it's not who you are as a person, it's actually only there because of that eating disorder mindset. And the moment you start gaining weight and the moment you start just, honestly, all the obsessions stop and they disappear and they dissipate because it's not who you are. And if that's a little bit of encouragement that you need to hear, then remember, I'm doing this right here with you guys. I'm here actually committing to this whole new program in recovery. I've started CBTE, which is something new for me. I hadn't really worked on that type of method before, but I've never worked fully one-on-one -on -one with a therapist before. And again, this is an intensive outpatient program. I got pretty poor medical results, which is what we were like, okay, we don't really have time to play around anymore on this. And especially after my little lull after braces, I kept saying to myself, you know, I can do this on my own. I'd always say that to my mom. I'd have days where I was so motivated and so inspired being like, I can do this on my own. Anorexia loves busyness. Now I've been busy where, with the two companies that I own, the full-time jobs, and there was always something where I could easily justify skipping a meal, where I could easily justify, oh no, you know, I was just busy at the end of the day. Yes, I'm happy doing my job, happy doing everything but I was just too busy at the end of the day for my recovery. And your eating disorder will love any easy little excuse it can make for keeping itself busy, anything like that. And that's when you've got to prioritize your life. 
and prioritize health comes first. And instead of eating to get to a specific BMI, thinking, okay, this is the target, yes, let doctors set that for you. For example, I would go the whole recovery process so far, I'd gone without even knowing my weight. I had no idea what it was. And I was always like to my nutritionist, oh, no, I don't want to get triggered. But my psychiatrist said to me, you're gonna stand on the scale every week and you're gonna look at your weight and you're gonna actually start to make peace after being exposed to that number. Because what happens if you recover to a healthy weight, whatever that is, that doesn't exist, to your body's happy set point, and you see the number on the scale later on, you're gonna get triggered by that number. So you've gotta let go of those whole beliefs that create those triggers around that specific number. Now I did have like a what I eat in a day film, but I had filmed quite a few of those to put on this channel. But people were always nitpicking it and people were always then comparing their plate to your plate and then they're triggered by this and then they start to get triggered by this number and then they're triggered because I said that I've been in recovery for 15 years because now they feel they're not sick enough or they feel triggered with this that know your triggers and if you're triggered by recovery content don't watch recovery channels my friends go watch e-news or go watch something on the tv like you know some sort of friends or whatever Gilmore Girls fantastic but if you're gonna try and look for places to trigger yourself or like I said, then maybe you're not in a place to watch these videos for inspiration. But if you do look at them as a form of inspiration, that's the best thing that you can do because then you realize, maybe I might see something that might pique you and think, oh, I didn't realize I did that. Yeah, that might help next time I'm eating to tell myself, you know, I'm eating to overcome these specific battles. And that was the whole premise and point of this specific channel is just to give you guys that type of hope and honest insight into things. When I have revelations, when I have feelings, I know a lot of you don't have that type of support, but if you are wondering about what the medical problem was, that they found that my sodium had completely dissipated in my blood and that came from not just drinking enough water, but being starved as well. But not starved as in the sense of restricting food, because I eat constantly throughout the day, it was just from refeeding syndrome. It was just calories being placed up too quickly. It wasn't working with a proper, proper, proper medical team. Now, not only do I have a full-time doctor, I have a full-time psychiatrist and full-time dietitian. It's the first time I've been in a proper controlled outpatient program because there hasn't existed one here. We've always thought, you know what? I can do this on my own. No, you can't do it on your own. And I think I say that every single video. But um, that's where I'm at now and I will keep you guys updated on everything from CBTE to how I'm starting to expose new different scenarios and settings, different food rules, challenging things like going to a grocery store without reading one freaking label or I try and cheat that by buying artisanal bread where I don't know what the calorie content of the bread is or you know just getting rid of my scales that I don't know how much is in something but at the moment I don't prepare any of my own foods, I give that to someone else to do. And if you guys are in a point where you don't have that type of luxury or you have a family or then outsource it, get meal delivery kits. Meal delivery kits are absolutely amazing. But what's been difficult with me is making peace with, I always thought that I could control my recovery. You know, I could hold on to these specific parts that I liked while having the benefits of feeling recovered, of being free, everything like that. But the truth is, if you try and control one point, like it was tough for me to let go, and it's gonna be triggering, okay, pause the video if you're triggered easily. But I always wanted to keep my thigh gap, or I always felt so proud about being sick, you know? It was a reason people in the room would notice me because I didn't feel special enough. And that's an eating disorder mindset, not feeling good enough or feeling like you have to be sick for someone to want to get to know you. But the truth is, while you are sick, People never will get to know you because you're too tired, because you're too busy playing this different role that you think everyone wants to see or you can't go to lunch with friends because you don't want them to see you eating or you're too tired or the lunch comes with too many conditions. For example, you've got to research a menu and then it's exhausting and then it's got to be at this specific time or you don't want them to see you ask for dressing on the side and it comes with so many rules and limitations that you just think it's so exhausting and the thought of living the rest of your life like that it's just not worth it and if you need someone there to give you that support that strength that encouragement to tell you these things that maybe you hadn't fully thought thought through but um like i said irritated all the time moodiness 
the guilt around food or just every day feeling frustrated like you didn't push yourself enough or you know what now you've got another day of doing the same things tomorrow it's difficult so do this with me change you probably have similar breakfasts and lunches every single day and dinners try and change three meals throughout the whole week so what i do now is i eat six meals a day but just three of those meals it can be spread over a different day add something new add something different start with baby steps and it's not easy at first but plan it out plan it out and tell someone about your plan and get them to help you stick to it there's nothing i can say that's going to help you recover because at the end of the day you've got to choose to do it and i always wanted people to say you know what i need you to help force me to do this i need you to help me do this but at the end of the day it was up to me to make the decision to do it no one else could say something to make the guilt go away no one else could say something to inspire me to get the fear food it had to come from me feeling sick of living a certain way and accepting accepting the weight gain is something different difficult but I would always worry about what my weight's gonna be in a month's time, in two months time, what my final weight's gonna be. And the whole approach that we're taking now is just focus on today. Just focus on today. And I know I've probably rambled quite a lot and I don't know if this was helpful, but if it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below to do this with me. And know that you guys have a friend every single step of the journey. And the next episode, I will answer a lot of your questions. I'm going to go into extreme hunger, all of that obsessive thoughts, how to overcome them. But I hope you guys have a beautiful day. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Mwah.